In the previous section, we implemented loop execution rate using the Compact Rio module data rate. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe while loop considerations on an FPGA VI. On this slide, let's take a look at that loop condition terminal. So if we look at the while loop here on the right, uh, notice that the loop condition over there, there is a false constant that is wired to it. So in the Windows world, that looks kind of weird because usually in Windows, you'd want that while loop to stop at some point. However, when you're running an application on the FPGA, um, there, are, there are several FPGA applications where it does make sense just to have that while loop run as long as that FPGA is running. So just wanted to let you know that on some FPGA VIs that you see, don't be surprised if you see a false constant wired there. That just means that that while loop is going to keep running. So if you want, however, uh, controls and application logic are still acceptable. So if, if you need some conditions for certain loops to stop based on a control or based on some applications logic, uh, feel free to implement it that way as well. Okay, now let's talk about while loop iteration terminal maximum. So if we take a look at this while loop, look at the iteration terminal there. So it's the terminal that has I on it. The behavior of this terminal is once that iteration terminal uh, gets to 21474836476, that's a pretty big number, but once it reaches that value, it'll just keep outputting that same number. It's not going to roll over, it's just going to saturate at that large number. Now when you're executing code in FPGA, because of the speeds of FPGA, you might have all while loops that are going to reach that 2 billion count very quickly. And then if you're relying on that iteration terminal to roll over, you're not going to get that expected behavior. So if you need that counter to roll over, then you need to implement that logic yourself. So if you take a look at the block diagram here, uh, that's exactly what we've done. So notice that we have a ship register. We're going to initialize it with a value of 0. And then what we do is we just keep incrementing it and uh, saving that incremented value back into the ship register. So this way, if we take a look at this particular code, it looks like that data type is a unsigned 32-bit integer. So once that count gets to that maximum value uh, of a U32 and you add another one to it, it's going to automatically over, uh, roll over to zero. So if you need uh, a counter to roll over, just implement some logic like this instead and don't rely on that uh, iteration terminal that you see in the while loop. Okay, so at this time, if you're able to, go ahead and do exercise 5.1. In this exercise, we're going to do some while loop timing with the R series uh, simulated board. So in this particular VI, we're going to use the Loop Timer Express VI to time the while loop, and that's uh, going to be a VI that's running on the FPGA VI. So let's go ahead and open up LabVIEW and take a look at this. Okay, let's take a look at exercise 5.1, while loop timing. So in this particular exercise, uh, we're going to add an FPGA target. And notice we've already added some FPGA IO and renamed it to analog input and digital output. All right, so let's take a look at the VI. So this is the completed solution for this exercise. And let's take a look at some of the logic here. Okay. So the first thing we have here is we've got a while loop. And we want that while loop to execute at a certain rate. And the way that we're implementing it in this case is using the loop timer express VI. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how that was configured. I'm going to double click it. And we see that we're using units of milliseconds right here. And we're also setting the size of the internal counter to 32 bit. So depending on what your maximum um, value you need, you can choose, choose the one accordingly. So in this case, we've just chosen the biggest one, 32 bit. So I'll click OK. And if we look at the rest of the code, uh, this is where uh, we're going to take an analog input and we're going to take it and compare it to the limit. And then if the analog input is greater than the limit, then we're going to um, show it on the indicator over limit. And not only that, we're also going to output a true on the digital output line. Okay. So let's go back to our project and we'll notice that Right now, uh, this is a simulated board, and we're able to at least simulate the execution by executing it on our dev computer. Okay, so in this case, there's no I.O. actually connected because there's no board there. Uh, we're just going to, when we run it, it's going to give us simulated values uh, for that analog input. Okay, so let's go back up here to the front panel, and let's go ahead and run it. So in this case, we're telling it, okay, uh, we want the analog input sample time to be 
500 milliseconds. Okay, so because we put 500 milliseconds here, when we go down to this code here, um, this is going to make our loop essentially execute once every 500 milliseconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And notice that every time um, the simulated analog input is greater than zero, the over limit LED will be on. And um, theoretically, it's also outputting a true to our digital output line. The last thing I wanted to point out is notice that um, this while loop, when is it going to stop? Because we have a false constant wired to it, this while loop will just run indefinitely on the FPGA. All right, let's take a look at this discussion question. So if the code in the second frame of the sequence structure in that demo takes longer to execute than the value of AI sample time control, how long would each iteration of the while loop take? So think about what happens if the code is actually going to take a longer amount of time than what we set in the uh, loop timer express VI. So this is what would happen. Each iteration of the while loop will last the same amount of time it takes to execute the code in the second frame of the sequence structure. Uh, the reason for this is because the logic in the loop takes longer to execute than the specified interval of that loop timer express VI. The loop timer express VI will return immediately and establish a new reference timestamp for subsequent calls. Now you can describe while loop considerations on an FPGA VI. Next, we will create delays between events using the wait express VI.